Hey everyone, my name is Wedge, and since PAX has been going on all weekend, we have a bunch more cons of Tarkir spoilers to talk about. I won't be covering every single spoiler in this video, but I'll get the ones that matter the most. If I don't cover a card that you particularly like, comment about it and we'll talk there. Also, there's a new Soren. Sick. The first card we're looking at today is the Lens of Clarity, one colorless mana for an artifact. You may look at the top card of your library and it face down creatures you don't control. This card is downright weird. Sure, Morph is going to be a thing, but unless it's a significantly played mechanic, half the value of this thing goes out the window. On the other hand, looking at the top card of your library could be cool, but again, I need special reasons to justify this card. It does synergize well with fetch lands. You look at the top card of your library, hate it, and you can fetch to get rid of it, so at least that's cool. Beyond that, this is a quirky artifact that I'll probably end up playing in limited, like every draft. Ugin's Nexus confirms what a lot of people have been suspecting. Ugin's all up in Tarkir's business somewhere, and that's awesome. The Nexus is 5 mana for a legendary artifact. If a player would be get an extra turn, that player skips that turn instead. If Ugin's Nexus would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield, instead exile it and take an extra turn after this one. The Nexus is hysterical. There's a modern time warp deck right now that runs from taking basically infinite turns. This card would be the funniest thing against that. Ask Lubafu, he plays it all the time. Beyond that, if you have your own artifact destruction or a sack outlet like, I don't know, Shrapnel Blast, this card isn't bad. Super funny for Commander, so that's, that's also definitely a thing. I knock Bondkin is 2 mana for a 2-1 Hound Soldier with Outlast costing 1 colorless and 1 white. Each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it has First Strike. This is an Outlast card I can get behind. It definitely justifies the sorcery speed requirement of the mechanic. Giving your creature permanent first strike is pretty sweet. Plus, it also enables it on all of your other Outlast creatures. I love this for an aggressive strategy. I think it shows us that Outlast will probably be better than initially expected. End Hostilities is three colorless and two white for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures and all permanents attached to creatures. Let me translate, just <clears throat> Hey, bestow, ha, yeah, see ya. Seriously, this card completely hoses the last block. It's kind of hysterical. Sure, it's a board wipe and that's awesome, but it's a five mana sorcery and I'm still spoiled from Supreme Verdict. Here's what's going to happen. Either bestow is going to be a huge deal and you play this, or it won't and you play Aether Spouts. That's pretty much where I'm at. Howl of the Horde is two colorless and one red for a sorcery. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. It also has raid. If you attack with a creature this turn, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell an additional time. Raid is seriously awesome. You get to copy something two more times in addition to its original casting. That's crazy. Even if you just have a simple lightning strike, that's nine damage to the face right there. I could easily see this card in a red-white burn situation, one that still functions running a couple of key creatures. Howl is one of those cards that can just come out of nowhere and destroy you in an instant. Definitely one of my favorite copy spells printed as of late. Mardu War Shriekers, three colorless and one red for a 3-3 Orc Shaman with Raid. When it enters the battlefield, if you attack with a creature this turn, add one red, one white, and one black to your mana pool. This is like a super burning tree emissary. Sure, it requires something to attack, but I get the feeling that the Mardu clan is all about attacking. This trigger will net you three mana and probably an extra creature. It'll be just fine and limited. I like where Raid is headed. Heir of the Wilds is two mana for a 2-2 human warrior with death touch and the new teamer mechanic Ferocious. When it attacks, if you control a creature with power four greater, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. 2 mana for a 2-2 two, two with death touch is a strict upgrade to the norm, so I'm all for this. The important thing is the ferocious mechanic. Another piece of confirmation that Teamer is all about gigantic creatures. This particular ferocious ability isn't super powerful, but it hints at things to come. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty pumped for Teamer. These creatures are going to be nuts. Ice Feather Aven is 1 green and 1 blue for a 2-2 two, two flying bird shaman with morph. For one colorless, one green, and one blue, you can turn it face up. 
When you do, you may return another target creature to its owner's hand. Limited bomb, easily. The morph trigger here is extremely powerful, plus you get a flyer out of it. If they keep printing more relevant morph triggers like this, I'm going to be one happy teamer player. It's like bird shamans, man. Like, how pesky. Sadissi Blood Tyrant is one colorless, one black, one green, and one blue for a 3-3 legendary creature Naga Shaman, the Sul Tai Khan. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Sadissi is insane for Commander. 4 mana is cheap, 3-3 three, three is decently sized, and the second ability doesn't require the first ability. It's whenever creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library. This is amazing for a graveyard-based strategy. It's serious value here. With regards to standard, milling the top three on entry or attack does enable delve really quickly. Seriously though, I, I can't get over the card for a commander. Players are going to flip out. It mills, it's relatively cheap, and it creates value on milling. It's just... It's so good, it's Commander staple for the rest of time. Soren, Solemn Visitors, two colorless, one white and one black for a four loyalty planeswalker. You can plus one to give creatures you control plus one plus oh and lifelink until your next turn. You can minus two to put a two two black vampire creature token with flying on the battlefield. And you can minus six to get an emblem with, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep that player sacrifices a creature. I like New Soren. His plus one gives your creatures a boost and life link until your next turn. Not the end of the turn. Think Commander. In a four person game, your creatures now have life link and plus one plus oh for basically four turns. That is cool. His ultimate is also pretty sweet for Commander, so I think you can expect to see this guy pop up in that format a lot. The second ability is nice. Creating 2-2 flyers is relevant for sure. If your opponent doesn't have board presence over two turns, you could get really annoying. With that said, his primary function will probably be at the top of an aggressive Mardu strategy. Play a bunch of creatures, drop Soren, plus one him, and go to town. He synergizes well with that clan. You all better be happy. This is a gift. This set is oozing with flavor. I could make like a, a flavor jacket. It's so thick. The Sul Khan is pretty awesome, Soren is cool, all the mechanics are turning out to be way better than I thought, it's just, it's, it's such a good set so far. Plus, you know, there are fetch lands, so the rest of the set could be Care Bears, and I'll still buy boxes. Just... Anyway, subscribe below for the latest and most reliable Khan's here spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Manasaurus, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.